This is The Reality. Hello again and welcome to The Reality. So good to be with you sharing the story of a life touched and changed for the good, for good, forever, by the love and grace of God. Today we're going to be sharing a story of somebody who is caught up in the occult. As we chat, perhaps you have some questions. I'd love to answer those questions. You can email me dudley at surereality.net. Now don't worry if you missed that. Later on in the show I'll give you that email address again. Today on The Reality we're speaking to Dana Emmanuel. In Jesus Alone... Jesus is the only way to know healing, peace, and deliverance. The devil and his hordes masquerade as benevolent spirits, but they are deceivers, thieves, killers, and destroyers. Dana Emmanuel was deluded by such spirits. She was an avid paranormal investigator or ghost hunter. Dana ignored the teachings and the ethics of scriptures in search of mystic enlightenment. I really was always interested in in the paranormal, but it wasn't until I had my own experience that I really started going out and trying to find answers from the spirits. Then I started going and helping other people that was having haunted homes. I thought I was helping them. And then we were trying to show them different ways to get rid of the spirits, which were not true ways of the Bible. Well, it's really wonderful to have Dana on uh, Skype with me today. Dana Emmanuel, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Dana, I have down in my notes that um, you are known or were known as a paranormal investigator or ghost hunter. Wow. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But I want to ask you, how did you find Jesus as Lord and Savior from this kind of lifestyle? Well, I went to church all my life. Um, You know, it was a Christian-based church. Uh, but I strayed away. I, I got into the occult, and I, I, it's like I, I knew who Jesus was, but I did not know Jesus as my personal Savior. You can go to church, but that doesn't mean that you, you know, you're a true believer. Hmm. Um, and and I believe that that's what happened with me. Or, or I just, you know, because like I said, I was, I went to church all my life, but it was just I did, I didn't know the word. I didn't. Um, I only went to to satisfy my dad, sadly, is what it was. I don't think I was a genuine believer. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so then how did, how did you get involved in the occult as you did? Uh, well, what happened was I really was always interested in, in the paranormal, uh, watching the scary shows of haunted houses and things like that. And um, But it wasn't until I had my own experience that I really – uh, dove deep into the subject and started going out and trying to find answers without looking into the Bible. Like I said, you know, I, I went out and tried to get my answers from the spirits. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, when you said that, um, uh, were you? Did you? Did you become a um, a medium? Uh, did you join a satanic yes. group? Or how did it happen? Uh, well, what happened was after I um, started going out to graveyards and you know, taking pictures and things and started getting some validations that these spirits were indeed real. Um, I, and I, like I said, I did have that experience. It was at my grandmother's house. Uh, I moved in with her and I was taking care of her and my grandfather had already passed away. So it was just um, my family and my grandmother. I was, we were, like I said, living in her home. Mm-hmm. Well, we started hearing noises in the middle of the night. And then one night I actually seen the kitchen chair move away from the table. So then I knew <laughs> mm-hmm. I knew the paranormal was real. I got I was really afraid, and everybody kept telling me, "Look, this is probably just Grandpa. He's just looking over your Grandma. Mm-hmm. Everything, you know, it's okay. He's not trying to harm you." So then I kind of embraced this idea. But then I was thinking, "Well, wait a minute. If this is Grandpa, why is Grandpa not in heaven?" Mm-hmm. You know. So that's when I got to thinking, "Well, wait a minute." Now I had questions more about the afterlife, but I wasn't seeking for the answers in the right place. I, I started going out asking the spirits. And um, then I got into, I uh, joined a, a a group. They were looking for members and I joined their group. And then I started going and helping other people that was having haunted homes. I thought I was helping them. We would go to their houses, try to validate their, uh, you know, that they were having paranormal activity in their homes. And then we were trying to show them different ways to get rid of the spirits, were which were not, 
true ways of the Bible. Um, it was actually like burning sage and, and, you know, using salt and things like that, which were actually occultic ways. So, um, you know, this these uh, ways do not lead to freedom. I mean, actually, the, the people always would come back. Oh, you know, we're having activity again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, that's the kind of thing I was doing. I thought I was helping people. Well, then um, I ended up get, having my own team and we continued to go out and things. And I mean, we were going out of state, going to different places, going to people's homes again, you know, trying to help them and everything and doing seances. And um, during these seances, it got to a point where it wasn't just I thought I was helping people. Now I thought I was helping the spirits. Mm -hmm. I thought I was helping the spirits, leading them to the light. I was actually acting as if I was a medium. I was being a medium. I was talking to these spirits during these table tippings, is what they call these seances, and um, trying to lead them to the light and things. So then, you know, it got even deeper then, and um, Mm -hmm. it just... It just went on from there. And then we started having a lot of activity in our home again. And but this time it was tormenting activity. I mean, it was it was activity that was uh, affecting my family. My husband was getting pretty severe attacks and everything. And um, and I also want to say that during these investigations, there was a lot of cases that claimed to be the spirits of young children. Hmm. And we kept noticing that these spirits Things just didn't line up. There was one case in particular where there was a young man. He was probably between the ages of 19 and maybe 21. And um, he was getting physical attacks in his home. And one time he was thrown into the wall so hard that he went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. It hurt his back. And when he was in the hospital, he told them what happened. Well, they sent him to a a mental mental, um, health facility. Mm -hmm. It's called Circles of Care. And he went in there. Well, one of the nurses there actually believed his story. So she knew some of my team members and actually um, referred him to us. Well, they called actually from the facility, wanted to know if we would be, you know, willing to come to their home and, you know, get some. Because then he, you know, everybody thought he was crazy. Hmm. He wanted validation. He wanted somebody to come in and get evidence that, you know, it wasn't just in his head that he really was having these problems and wanted us to clear the home. Hmm. Well, you know, the spirit, when we went to the home and we did a preliminary investigation um, the week before we actually did the full investigation, the spirit come through this girl that lived in the home also and claimed to be the spirit of a young girl. And so keeping that in mind, the next week when we had the full investigation, the uh, young man was there you know, while we were finishing up for the night and he asked us, he said, well, can I just go in the back room with you when you do a seance and maybe the spirit will come through because it, it doesn't like me, you know, maybe something will happen. Mm -hmm. So we was like cautious about it, but we thought, okay, you know, it's, it's at his own discretion. So we took him in the room and we were doing a seance with what they call dowsing rods, dowsing rods for anyone that doesn't know, it's like an L shaped rod and you hold them in both hands and they have the little cylinders on the end that you put in your hands, and they, they move freely. Mm-hmm. So when you ask questions, you give them um, uh, questions that could be uh, yes and no, and you just ask the questions. Like I said, it's like a medium-type work. So you mm-hmm. get the messages in your head, and then you validate it. You ask the spirit of questions, and it says yes or no. Well, the gentleman that's on my team that was asking questions, he was asking provocative questions, trying to provoke this spirit. Mm-hmm. And I really won't go into exactly things he was saying because it was, like I said, trying to provoke. But all of a sudden, the spirit literally threw the man in the wall so hard, it sounded like something crashed into the to the house on the outside. It was mm-hmm. that loud. Mm-hmm. And so we were really shocked. I mean, but the thing about it was, Dudley, is this was a spirit that was saying it was a young girl. Mm-hmm. And then after this incident happened, we spoke to the spirit again, and it it claimed ownership it did say that that it was the one that did it Mm -hmm. and it said that it was because the boy the the guy reminded her of her father Mm -hmm. um which had killed her and you know this was just all what the spirit was telling us Mm -hmm. and um so it was just that and then i kept hearing of other cases that were like mimicking cases and i was like wait a minute now if these spirits can mimic the dead sometimes 
How do we not know that they're not always Mm -hmm. mimicking the dead? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we know that they're not, you know, because it did seem like there was always cases where if it wasn't just a bad spirit, it was like two different spirits. It was like a good spirit in the home and a bad spirit, Mm -hmm. like a good cop, bad cop (laughs) scenario, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking, well, wait a minute, maybe that. The good spirit is just, you know, when the spirit's not showing its true colors, you know, maybe Mm -hmm. it really is that they're all demons Mm -hmm. um, and Mm -hmm. stuff. So I started questioning this. And when I started questioning this, then that's when we started having really bad activity in my home. Mm -hmm. That's when uh, I I started looking into the Bible. And I thought, wait, because I had one of my brothers that kept telling me, he said, Dana, you don't realize that the spirits are talking to are demons. The people are no longer here when they die. He says, read the Bible, Mm -hmm. you know, and I was like, ah, you know, well, I mean, I just believe that since these um, answers I was getting back from these spirits were so real and these spirits seem to be so real because when you have these experiences, you know that it's a real true experience. So you're assuming, well, since it's a real experience, then these spirits must be telling the truth, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's it's very deceptive, mm. very deceptive. And and I've noticed that the thing another thing that makes it so deceptive is when someone is grieving the loss of their dead mother or their dead father, then when you hear a spirit that comes in and they seem so nice and you start getting these messages from a psychic and I mean the tears start flowing, you want so badly to be able to connect with that loved one again that it's it's hard when someone comes along and says honey you don't realize that that spirit that was talking to you mm. was not really your dead mother and it i've i've done it i have actually talked at churches and you know told my testimony and i've had people come up and say but but you don't understand i mean this spirit was so it really seemed to she knew things you know that only my mother knew and I'm like, yeah, but you know what? Demons know these things, too. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what makes it so hard to to know that it's a real deception behind it. Mm-hmm. It's a strategy. You know, the enemy wants to take our eyes off Jesus, and he wants us to, to get our attention. And what better way to do it? But then our le- dead loved ones that we miss so much, you know, it, it's, it's very deceptive. And I, I tell you, it's very hard. When you talk to someone like that and they they tell you, you know, oh, it was my my dead mother. She said and they're crying. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had that. I've had one that they lost their child and they keep hearing this toy going off in the bedroom and hear noises in there. And I'm trying to tell them, I know and I understand your grief. But, you know, the Bible does say we're no longer here when we die, Mm -hmm. you know, and and they just well, you know, because some people go to thinking, well, wait a minute, maybe the Bible's only only true in some verses not all of them maybe there are mistakes in the bible starts really questioning our faith we start really questioning things you know you are listening to the reality produced by sure reality a listener supported ministry we value your prayers and support very much you can help us touch millions of people with the reality of christ by becoming a vision partner visit surereality.net and click on become a vision partner That is, become a vision partner at surereality.net. Listen again to the reality on our podcasts at surereality.net. Well, if you've just joined us, it's really good to have your company. Thank you so much. My name is Dudley Anderson, and you're listening to The Reality. Just to remind you, indeed, you can listen again to this program at our podcast on the website surereality.net. I mentioned earlier that I'd give you my email address again. So if, you, if you've if you heard anything so far in our discussion and you've got some questions or you need some prayer, I would love to hear from you. Perhaps you'd like to talk to Dana. I'd love to refer you on to her. Email address is dudley at surereality.net. Well, today we're talking to Dana Emmanuel. Dana has shared how she grew up in church, but she ignored the teachings of the Bible and the teachings of the Christian faith and became infatuated with the paranormal. She began to look for ways that she thought was helping people to be delivered from their haunted houses. But later she became convinced that if people believed that their dead relatives were in heaven, how is it that they manifested as ghosts in their homes? Dana was soon to discover the truth that these spiritual encounters were in fact not spirits of dead people, but evil spirits or demons masquerading as dead relatives. In Jesus alone can we find the true meaning of life, peace or deliverance. Let's pick up our conversation once again with Dan Emanuel on The Reality. (laughs) 
to go back after we started having the really bad attacks in in our home. I mean, it got it, it was really like a spiritual war zone. And um, finally, I I was looking up stuff about deliverance and 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 all and other testimonies. I come across Laura Maxwell's testimony, which I know you're you're um, you know about mm-hmm. her testimony, very mm-hmm. powerful one. And um, she had lost her 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 dear mother to these spirits, you know. And um, so I found her testimony very powerful, and it, and it, and it kind of put an urgency in my spirit, <laughs> you know, like gosh, man, I better we need to find out. We got to get help. I, I said, look, we're going to go to a church. We're just going to find some church around here that maybe can, can you know, cast these spirits out of you. That's what I was thinking, you know. So the next week we went down there to the church. And uh, after the service was over, my husband and I, we walked down to, down to the altar and we were talking to the, uh, it was an assistant pastor. And he asked us, he looked at my husband and I told him that I was a paranormal investigator. And he says, you're a what? And I told him, I said, well, I'm a ghost hunter. I said, but, you know, I help people and, and everything. And I said, I think I have a spirit that might have attached to me. And it it followed, it come home with me. And now it's attached to my husband. And he says, honey, you got to stop doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And he said, that's probably what's causing all this. And I said, what? I mean, in my heart, I kind of knew. I mean, it was like God was revealing it to me, you know. So then he asked my husband, my husband had on a, a, a rosary bead necklace on his neck. Like I said, I was using any kind of tactics at home to get rid of these things. Mm. I was confused. I was using religious syncretism, but it wasn't helping, you know. So I was explaining to him about the crosses, and he looked at my husband. He said, he said, son, if you don't mind, will you please take it off? So he took it off, and I looked at him, and, you know, and I was like, if you don't mind me asking, why did you have him take that off? And he says, you have to realize something. When you take your faith and you put it on a web, on an item, you're taking your faith off Jesus. It's Jesus and him alone is all you need to get freedom. And when he said that, I was like, whoa. I mean, the blinders were being ripped off, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, um, and I was like, wow. So he started to pray with us. And when he was, he was really, you know, uh, praying with my husband and myself. But I started feeling very uncomfortable. I mean, it sounds crazy enough as it seems because I was so desperate to be there and to get the help. Hmm. Part of me felt like I needed to get the run out of that church. It was it was an odd feeling. Um, but then it hit me why I was feeling that. And I thought, wait a minute, that spirits. I mean, I got to. I just got to, you know, have this faith that, that he's talking about in, J- in Jesus and him alone, mm. and he can do this. So I don't have to be afraid. So I just kept saying, in the name of Jesus, you got to go. In the name of Jesus, you got to go. You know, and I was praying and just praying, and finally that feeling I was having just just broke. It mm. just stopped. Mm-hmm. And I was weeping, and I mean, it was just, it was like I really, truly accepted Jesus and Jesus and him alone. Uh-huh. And I but I saw, and I seen everything I was doing for what it really was. And the gra- the gravity of just air, all sin, you know, in general, and the fact that I had been displeasing God, mm-hmm. and and what I had been doing to my family, it was just like all of this was happening at one time, and I mean, I was just sobbing. It was it was a a very incredible experience, wow. you know. Mm-hmm. But um, but I was just so thankful, and I still am today because this happened in 2011, and to this day. Jesus is working in my life. Praise God. He is really touching all my family one at a time. And, you know, because we is once one of us gets saved, we're not all saved until each person comes to a place of repentance. You know, God has to work everyone out with their own salvation, you know. Um, But I'm just so thankful that God is truly working in my life. He's still doing it today. My husband actually himself just got really saved. I mean, just in the last, like, it was Mother's Day. Mother's Day. He got saved. And, I mean, the Lord is really working with him, Dudley. And, I mean, I I can't even, uh, the gratitude I have (laughs) for the Lord, you just have no idea. Thank you, Jesus. Fantastic. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, that's yes. incredible. Wow, what an amazing testimony, uh, Adena. You know, um, as you were, you were speaking, um, and all those experiences that you had, and and all that deception that you were under, uh, reminded yes. me of what Jesus said. First of all, Jesus said that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You know, so anything and everything yes. that the devil does is either murder, it's theft, or it's total destruction. But then Jesus said too. And that the devil is the father of lies. 
He's a great yeah. deceiver. And, uh, you know, he, the, one of the yeah. things that he's deceived, he deceived you into believing. And I um, trust, you know, we, we, we believe that many people in the world, whether they're in the occult or not, is to believe that there's no such thing as, uh, as, as, um, uh, as forgiveness and, and everybody's okay. There's no such thing as sin. You know, we can all just go to heaven one day when we die. And, and this whole concept of... Um, of uh, you know our dead family members coming back to live with us and to be with us and calling upon the dead it's a falsehood it's a lie it's a deception mm-hmm. from satan and this is what the bible teaches don't you agree yes i sure do first thessalonians 4 13 through 18 you know that verse you know to comfort each other with these words and it says but i would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so then which sleep in jesus will god bring with him for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent them which are asleep for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then which we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort each other with these words this is what Jesus wants us to know when we grieve for our loved ones we will see them again one day you know they're not here no more they're not here no. seeing the the um the sorrow and the things of this world you know yeah. jesus has wiped their tears away yeah. and that's a good thing to know that yeah and uh, i i want to know that you absolutely know? and you know often and it's part of your testimony often the the deceptive spirits as you call them they are evil spirits they they're demons um they disguise themselves as either young children or pretty young girls you know the the, the new age is filled with these spirit guides who are beautiful and serene and caring but it's a total lie. It's a deception. Yes, yes, yes. They, and the Bible says that, you know, Satan is no marvel for Satan himself. A masquerade is an angel of light. Mm. If he can come back as something that good, that holy, he can certainly come back and masquerade as your dead loved one. Mm, mm, mm. Well, yeah. praise God. Um, uh, Dana, you also mentioned a little earlier about uh, that uh, young man who had um, a demonic experience and ended up in hospital and they put him in a, in a mental yes. um, a ward. Um, how often do people like yourself and others who have been involved in the occult, how often do they get misdiagnosed as mentally ill? Oh, Mr. Dudley, I I I would be hesitant to to uh, of course to um, to guess at a number, but I do know that I would say at least probably half of the ones that's in the the mental facilities are actually it's not mental problems, it's spiritual problems. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, truly believe that. And it's it's a sad thing, you know, because like I said, look at what happened to Laura Maxwell's mother. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she was diagnosed and put in there and she never got the help she really needed. And and she ended up, you know, it it, it, it read to her. She, she com- killed herself, sadly. Mm, yeah, I know. Treadful. We've had her on, had uh, Laura on, on the reality uh, some time back. Amazing. Yes. Um, yes. And you also, I believe that you also used some, you know, um, some equipment, some paraphernalia to deal with these evil spirits or these ghosts in these houses um, but we don't deal with the spirit world with natural phenomenon do we how do we deal with a spiritual attack in our lives if we have any spiritual attacks in our life first I say we need to stay in our Bibles and and you know I, and Christian music just listening to it and worshiping the Lord is a big one too but we can rebuke these spirits in the name of Jesus it's in his name and his name alone and not as not as a magical wand but uh, to actually know Jesus hmm. you know and and I've learned too that you know if, if anybody even an unbeliever if they find themselves getting spiritual attacks and if they say leave in the name of Jesus that spirit will leave every single time now if they have an open door and they're still not come to the lord and saved that spirit will come back yet another night it won't make it go away for you know forever they will come back but they always leave at the name of jesus amen praise god amazing stuff um 
just a, a quick one, uh, uh, Dana. You know, you said that uh, you were pretty much involved in or, or interested in these paranormal television programs where they go out and, you know, uh, have these films of of demonic or, or spiritual phenomenon. Um, are there any other ways that we could, uh, you know, get lured into this way of life without even realizing it? Oh, the media is a really big one. I mean, I, I say that that's a lot of the problem today is all of the shows. I mean, it's the shows. It's in the in the stores. I was standing in the in the line at a convenient gro- uh, grocery store the other day, and I looked in just one little area. There was like five different books, Haunted History in America. Um, there was just all kind of thing about people that like the ghost hunter shows, um, stuff about uh Uh, yoga you know things like that things that are of course controversial but but they do lead to the demonic Mm. and you know people see these things and they think oh this looks so entertaining because guess what to an unbelieving world they do see that as entertaining you know because we do have a part of us that yearns for our spirituality Mm. you know our true spirituality but there it can be perverted if the enemy comes along and suggests these type of ways you know it's easy for them to go to that because that's what they they yearn for but um they have the supernatural a lot of people do it's it can be sensationalized and and you know it's it pe- the enemy can really truly deceive people through those programs mm, so the, the the warning is to stay clear stay away from these things you know other games like your ouija boards and stuff to stay away from these yes absolutely and you know a lot of people think that um, you know, of course, a Ouija board is a terrible thing. Um, but I, if you just take a, an audio recorder and set it down on a table and start asking questions to a spirit, it's really no different than using an Ouija board because it's the intent behind the tool and it's what you're actually doing. Because the Bible tells us that communicating with the spirits and necromancy is an abomination. And, you know, God, you know, he does offer forgiveness and praise God for that. Because I, I'm forgiven. But, it, it, you know, there are um, consequences when we do those things. It does open the door for the demonic in our lives. And not only are we affected, but our families also. Mm. Just to finish the quotation I quoted earlier, Jesus said, The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But he goes on to say, But I have come to give you abundant life. And, uh, and Dana, that life starts the moment I say, Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And it takes me on to eternal life and a place of peace. Jesus promised a peace, not like the world knows, but a deep inner peace. And somebody involved in, in the occult and, and activities that you were involved in, and just by your testimony, I can read into it that you did not have that peace. And only Jesus can give us a deep inner peace if we call upon the name of Jesus and be saved. You mentioned earlier the f- uh, phrase that you used uh, was um, in Jesus alone. And I really believe that that is the answer to uh, any of our questions today is to get into Jesus alone. His name is above every name. Fantastic, amazing story. Thank you so much, Dana, for joining us today on The Reality. Pray God's blessing upon your life and work. Well, what a pleasure to speak to Dana Emanuel today on The Reality. What an amazing story. If you'd like to know more about what we've been speaking today, I encourage you to email me. Drop me an email, dudley at surereality.net. D-U-D-L-E-Y, that's how you spell my name, dudley at surereality.net. I'd love to pray with you. The Reality is produced by Sure Reality, a listener-supported radio ministry. It's only with your prayers and financial contributions that we can produce these radio programs and are broadcast around the world. Please consider partnering with us by becoming a vision partner at the website surereality.net. From me, Dudley Anderson, to you, as always, be sure to keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless. God bless.